enjoy. A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Duck Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Budic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Story number one. Martial Art, written by Stubby Jim. There are plenty of things that humans do that we might find odd or dangerous. But to them, it's just an everyday thing, Oxitar said, chattering his mandibles as he told the larvae a preface to his story. Like insane engineers that treat a ship as they do their females, with a strange care and reverence that would make you forget that they were working on machines. The strange and uh, often illegal chemicals that their bodies naturally produce, running it throughout their system, giving them increased strength and endurance. Their strange resistance to some of the most deadly toxins in the galaxy, and eat them for fun. Even the fact that they are intelligent death worlders that come from one of the least hospitable planets ever discovered by our Republic, or even their frightful capabilities of war. Being able to topple empires or threats that have been plaguing us for millennia in a matter of years. Everyone knows how strong and resilient a human is, that they could crack my shell with a few blows of their hammer-like fists and be able to lose multiple limbs and still be alive. As a species, they are the most dangerous group of sapiens ever. But what if I told you... Now with specialized trading, a human can become the most lethal close quarter combatant ever. So deadly, they could take down a Thassian behemoth with just their hands and feet. The larvae stared at Morxator with a mix of awe and curiosity. So, it is all started with the premiere of the 406th Tucker Bowl, a tournament where a great fighters gather from all around the galaxy to participate in the hope to win glory and fame, Morxator began, pricking his antenna with some nostalgia. I had the honor of participating, but I didn't end up going far, losing in my first round. No, the humans weren't strangers to the Tuckerball. As the previous five champions before were all human, Morxator tapped his legs, pausing for a moment. Later, I realized that they were a kind of close-quarters fighter called a boxer, able to deliver punches at 232 units an hour, or 40 miles an hour in human units. Really? Why did the larva I spoke, chittering its mandibles with awe? How can they move their limbs that fast? Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm not a biologist. Morxador chuckled at his own joke. But I digress. Anyway, during the tournament, there were three humans participating, two of them big for the standard human and both practitioners of boxing, the style of combat that dominated the tournament for several years without contest. What about the third human? A larva chimed in with a curious look in their eyes. What was he like? Well, that was a strange thing, Morxator said, leaning in closer. He was tiny, even for a human. Around three and a half units tall, or five foot two inches, a shrimp, as the humans would say, compared to the other humans. Was he too a boxer? A love, I asked, crawling closer to Moxitor. No, Moxitor, Shiggy said. He was a practitioner of a combat style named after a vegetable on earth. Karate. What's so different in boxing? Well, for one, it uses more than just their fists. Bowled up into hammers. Moxitor started to explain. But they also, their hands are like chopping scythes of the mazit, make their fingers like the impaling spikes of an eridol, and even use their lower limbs to kick their opponents. They use their lower limbs to attack, the larvae tilted its head. That's weird. Yes, it is, Morxador nodded. What's even stranger is that it can even be more powerful than their fists, something a diridan berserker was not prepared for when his shell was so cracked and so heavily damaged that he was paralyzed for life. The larva's eyes grew wide at hearing that. So the tournament was still going on. The humans were progressing through the rounds, with the favorite being the boxer Phoenix, as he won the previous two tucker balls, with a close second being the other boxer, Liam. But seeing the third human, Kim, progress with little difficulty, he became what the humans called a dark horse or an underdog of the tournament. 
The semi-final had just started and Liam had managed to beat Phoenix, progressing to the final round. Then came Kim's match against the Thessian behemoth, easily towering over the small humans four times over, with the thickest shell known to the galaxy. Against the small, pink, Deathwilder, Oxitol paused a moment, letting it all sink in. Did, did, did the human die? A lava asked. No, oh, of course he didn't. A different lava I snapped. Weren't you listening in the beginning when he said the human taken down? All right, all right, calm down, you two. Morxador chuckled, separating the larvae. Now everyone thought that the Sian was going to win due to its sheer size and power. But no, it lost in two strikes that broke into its carapace with ease and another poking out its eyes. When the match was concluded to Kim's victory, the whole audience held its breath as they saw the two humans' fighters face off. Morxeter continued, The air was electric, I tell you, a feeling as if the titans were about to fight to the death. A roaring inferno of two death machines were about to clash and burn the whole galaxy to the ground. But before the fight started, the humans bowed to each other, then shook each other's hands. Morxeter said with disbelief. Then the match started. Liam threw punch after punch while Kim kicked and chopped with his hand, both dodging and blocking the attacks that they sent to each other. The crowd was silent with total awe as they saw Liam slowly lose to his shorter opponent. Then, with one kick to the head, Kim had won the tournament by knockout. Wow, all the lava said in unison. Wow indeed, little ones, Morxador agreed. After the damage of Kim's martial arts was shown to the Republic, all the humans who have learned karate from that point on were immediately classed as deadly weapons and were banned from participating in future Tucker Bells. The funny thing is, when the next one came around, there was another martial art that was introduced and later banned named Judo, and after that, Mai Tai, and so many more, that the Republic had decided to create an entirely new tournament for all those human martial arts. You mean the Carnival? asked the larvae. Morxatol laughed as he patted the larvae on the head. Yes, the cowbell, and I'm lucky enough to have tickets for all of us to watch. End of story. Story number two. The Useless Human, written by Rosie013. Ilix was saved. She had heard that there was a small contingent of human death worlders amongst the fleet, but actually managing to contact one under her current circumstances was a godsend. Silently, the human watched her emerge from the dense jungle and approach the crashed life pod. Just hours ago, the mustering expedition fleet had been ambushed and torn apart by unknown assailants, scattering falling debris and precious few escape pods across the surface of the uncivilized hellhole of a planet. Enix had been one of the lucky ones. Her raft arrived intact, but alone, with no better plan, she had made out towards the next nearest crash site, desperately hoping for other survivors and not just bits of starship. But a legendary human was much better. He could protect her, help her survive long enough to be rescued. She recalled reading about them in her interspecies lessons. Their great strength and endurance, bravery and heroism, able to survive no matter the circumstances. No wonder they made great warriors. Of course, she had never met one before. They were rare and <clears throat> somewhat uncouth for most civilized inner world folk. But that didn't matter in the slightest right now. Strangely, the human didn't respond to her hails, watching her warily. This sent Elixir's heckles up an end. This was not the friendly greeting that she had envisioned. Fighting her discomfort, she advanced and started to gather some of the ration bars from the pod, sure that the human could step forwards and assist with simple survival task. After a moment, it was clear that it had no intention of helping. Elix turned around to face the human, ready to scold him for his uselessness, when she realized that he was still staring right at her. He hadn't moved an inch. She noticed the bunched muscles beneath his clothing, the way he leaned back against the pod, almost coiled. Predator, her hindbrain screamed into her consciousness. Having badly misread the full situation, Elix swallowed and took a few steps backwards towards the comparative safety of the jungle. The human watched her, unblinking, 
terrified at what might be, it turned and fled to the undergrowth, her mind awash with violent fates that could soon befall her. She had to find other, non-death world survivors at fast. Captain Locum stared at the retreating alien as it loudly flailed its way through the jungle. He didn't mind that it had helped itself to its depressingly small emergency food supply. He didn't much mind for anything anymore. He'd been dead for hours. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed 